In this short video, we're going to look at how torque is measured primarily on a turboprop aircraft, uh, but it can be applied to turboshaft uh, aircraft also. And we're going to look at the two mechanisms, the mechanical uh, and electrical uh, mechanism of, of measuring the torque. So we will begin the, the video by looking at what happens with the, with the shaft itself. So assume I have a shaft here and I'm going to apply some torque to it. If we put a load at the end of this uh, shaft, there will be an equal and opposite reaction torque at the other end of, this, of the shaft. So you can imagine, you know, putting your hand over the shaft here and twisting it in this direction and putting your hand over the shaft here and twisting it in that direction. You're going to get a torsional effect. And we can uh, visualize that torsional effect by uh, marking out the shaft as such. So when we apply this torsion due to the torque and equal and opposite reaction torque, we will get a distortion in the shaft. So the shaft will, will, will twist. Now if I look at this line in particular, so we started when we started the line was in a horizontal position and because of the torsion it is now dis distorted to, to this position here and we can look at these down below and you can see there's an angle between the initial position and uh, the final position due to, due to the torsion so this is what actually happens on a on a propeller shaft and a propeller might distort by between zero and, and four degrees uh, when uh, when the torque is applied now there is a relationship between uh, the torque and the angle and it's based on this formula and I will do another video on this formula, how we we'll get this formula at a later date. But we say that the torque over the second polar moment is equal to the modulus of rigidity times the, the angle theta all over the length of the shaft. And I can just rearrange that to have torque and theta uh, to one side. Now for any pro given propeller the angle theta here is um, equal to t times L over gj and for, for the propeller L will be a constant but the length of the shaft will be a constant. g, the modulus of rigidity, that will be a constant because the shaft will be made of a particular material that will have a modulus of rigidity and j, the second polar moment, uh, will also be a constant because um, that's predicated on the, the diameter of the shaft. So that will also be a constant. So effectively, our torque uh, relationship with the angle of uh, twist is just um, by a factor that is, that is a constant. So I'm replacing L over gj here by this constant uh, kt. So that's the relationship between uh, torque and the angle of twist. And we can use that uh, relationship to, to measure the torque. And there are two ways of doing it. Uh, one using a mechanical uh, system and another using an electrical system. So if we begin with the uh, mechanical system. So this is the shaft. So let's say this is the ship power shaft coming from uh, the power turbine and this is a, a, a torsion shaft and this goes on to the reduction gearbox and this is the propeller shaft here. So as the engine is turning this shaft is turning and, and, and this shaft is turning. Both of these gears are turning at the same rate because they're on the, they're on the same shaft. Now the brains behind this uh, system is this helical gear set uh, here. And the helical gear set consists of an internal toot female gear. So that's here. So this part here, their internal uh, teeth on this part. I'm showing them here in blue. And an external toot male gear. So this gear here is on this shaft. So this sticks to, it's on this grey shaft here. So the yellow is at the end of the grey. And this is a male. So this male interacts with this uh, female. 
The female gear is driven by the high speed uh, pinion shaft gear and the propeller reduction gear system. The gear is also driven by the power turbine through the torsion shaft. The male gear is driven by the main shaft. So this shaft here drives this gear here and this is as this turns this gear here is on that shaft so it turns also. The two drive gears turn at the same rotation speed but any twisting of the torsion shaft caused by the torque reaction. Okay, so if we apply a torque and we get a torque reaction then there will be a difference in um, the angle of the shaft so the shaft will, tw will twist and there will be a twist between this side of it and, and here. So any twisting of the torsion shaft caused by torque reaction of the propeller produces an angular difference between the two gears. This angular distance causes the female gear to move in over the male gear. So if we get an angular difference, this gear here is going to want to turn or, or twist, sorry, turn over uh, the, the male gear. So if, if there's an angle of, of twist, so if this gear just twists a little bit, it's going to cause this female gear to move in this direction, so to move over this, this male gear. Now as it moves, uh, it moves this pilot valve, so it moves it to the right. So we get an increase in torque, the female gear wants to move to the right, that moves the pilot valve to the right, and engine oil coming into the gearbox here, they the opening here then gets reduced, so that will cause a build up of pressure here. So the pressurized uh, oil, I'll just do that again. So when when it moves, let's just look at this again. So when there's a, a torsional difference, this is going to move by a little angle. And watch it move to the right. And when it moves to the right, this in, this moves. Okay. So that reduces the um, volume of oil that can come out through here. So that will increase the pressure. And, and let's just watch that one more time. So we're at two, four, five, six torque here. That increases to two seven five six. Okay, so we in increase the oil pressure, and this torque meter here is really just a pressure differential gauge. So it's measuring the difference in pressure between this point here and between the gear case, the oil in, in the gear case. So pressurized oil flows into this metering valve. When the torque is low, there is no angular difference between the two helical gears here and the pilot valve is moved uh, to the left allowing the oil to flow through a chan channel in the metering uh, valve body and into the gear case. When the load increases this will move to the right and um, the engine torque has increased this will cause it to move to the right and this increase in torque will increase the twist in the torsion shaft. The twisting movement causes the female gear and the pilot to move to the right. This movement of the pilot valve restricts the flow of oil into the gear case, causing an increase in the pressure differential at the indicator. And that will give us this bigger read. Now, one problem, is, uh, just look at that one more time. So, when we increase the, the torque, it's going to move to the right. We've got an increase in, in, in pressure here. Now, if we didn't do anything about it, this pressure would continue to build and build and build, and we get the meter going up and up. So, to counteract that, the high pressure here is applying a force on this spring, and this then moves to the right. Until we reach a position where the pressure here 
is in equilibrium with the spring tension. And that will give us a steady reading here on our, on our top. Okay, so that's how, how uh, the torque is measured on the mechanical uh, system. What if we had an engine failure? Well, in uh, a turboprop, if we have an engine failure, then the propeller will then be driving the engine, not the engine driving the propeller. So we will get a negative torque. And what will happen then is the pilot valve will actually move out in this direction. And we'll get a drop in we'll get a drop in pressure here. So the uh, electronics in here can can detect that drop in pressure and that can send the signal to a negative torque switch, which will then go to the feathering valve and allow the propeller to automatically uh, feather. Okay, so that's the mechanical system. Um, I'm a bit long, this is 11 minutes, so I will stop that here and we'll look at the electrical torque measurement system.